ladies and gentlemen, to a quick broadcast of Jerusalem's Gate. Today is the Lord's Day. It's Sunday, and usually I don't do a video on Sunday, but I, I just wanted to do a quick video on North Korea. Uh, Kim with North Korea made a bold statement that they will not put up with the United States aggression uh, stemming from a comment that President Biden made about North Korea in his first uh, address to Congress. Well, I watched that uh, that that address, and uh, I didn't see, I couldn't detect any kind of threatening of North Korea or anything. It just said, uh, President Biden just simply said, uh, we will not, uh, uh, you know, we would uh, be with our allies on important decisions, somewhat of, of that, if I can best translate it. But, uh, you know, North Korea, if they would have been stopped prior to getting nuclear weapons, and you heard me say all the time, once a country becomes a nuclear military country, especially a country that has ICBMs that can reach anywhere in the world, the whole uh, approach to that country totally changes. Now, Iran knows this. Iran knows this, and Iran is at that critical point where if they have not got the nuclear bomb, they're very close to getting it. I will say, like I, I've been saying for many years, that uh, Iran is not going to stop its uh, nuclear ambitions because they know uh, they'll be handled differently by the world if they become a nuclear-powered country. Yeah, they may receive uh, the benefits of having the uh, sanctions lifted. Uh, who knows, they may receive a uh, few cargo uh, uh, planes of, of cash again. I don't know, but uh, I can tell you, Iran's not going to stop its nuclear ambitions. Uh, Israel proved that on the last nuclear deal by sending in a, a special ops uh, unit into Iran to tree documentation to prove that they were in fact still doing their uh, nuclear program. Well, uh, it's very imperative uh, that we do not let Iran get in a position that North Korea is in because North Korea can strike anywhere in the world with nuclear weapons uh, and uh, we cannot let Iran be in that position because Iran is a lot, m lot more uh, prompt to uh, venture out in uh, to different territories where North Korea tends to keep to themselves. Uh, Iran has a uh, uh, an attitude of expanding uh, their interests. But uh, with that being said, I just wanted to give you this quick broadcast. We must keep those nuclear weapons out of Iran by not stopping them, not giving them money or lifting sanctions, by, but stopping them. How do you define that? Well, I'm not a military person and I'm not a politician, so I'll leave that up to them. All I'm saying is that Iran is on the march. The Persian Tiger is on the march to get nuclear weapons and they must be stopped. North Korea lashed out at the U.S. this morning in a series of statements saying recent comments from Washington are proof of a hostile U.S. policy and warned it would take corresponding measures. This is seen as a way for the North to gain leverage as the Biden administration finalizes its North Korea policy and with Biden himself to meet with South Korean President Moon Jae-in later this month. Min Soo Kan reports. North Korea on Sunday said U.S. President Joe Biden made a big blunder in his first congressional address last week, saying that his remarks indicate a hostile policy. Kwon jung -gun, Director General of the U.S. Affairs Department at the North's Foreign Ministry, said Biden's policy is now clear, so the North will have to take corresponding measures, and with time, the U.S. will find itself in a very grave situation. He also warned that Washington will face a crisis beyond control if it approaches North Korea from what he called an outdated perspective. In Wednesday's presidential speech to Congress, the U.S. president singled out North Korea and Iran's nuclear programs as serious threats to world security. On Iran and North Korea, 
nuclear programs that present serious threats to American security and the security of the world. We're going to be working closely with our allies to address the threats posed by both of these countries through, di through diplomacy as well as stern deterrence. A separate statement accused the U.S. of engaging in political chicanery last week when the U.S. State Department called North Korea one of the most repressive and totalitarian states in the world. The comments came after Biden's press secretary Jen Psaki on Friday said it had completed a months-long review of North Korea and plans to pursue a calibrated practical approach that differs from the two previous administrations. Experts say that the series of statements from Pyongyang is a way for the North to try and gain leverage. North Korea released the two statements today to put pressure to the United States in order to get what they want. They um, demand and request this withdrawal of this hostile policy first, but uh, it seems to me there is no kind of uh, the effort by the Biden administration to withdraw any kind of hostile policy. Meanwhile, U.S. President and South Korean President Moon Jae-in are scheduled to sit down for their first face-to-face -face bilateral summit in Washington later this month. Min Suk-kyun, Arirang News.